The next question for our exam review, what do stem cells do? Let's have a quick look at how cells work first. People did some experiments a while ago. They took some cancer cells and they put them in amongst a whole lot of healthy cells. Here's a healthy cells. They threw in a cancerous cell and what do you know? The cancerous cell grew normally. It no longer acted like a cancerous cell. It's working like normal cell. And that led to another investigation where they took a cancer tumour with cancerous cells in red today and they threw in a normal cell or two and what do you know those cells started to act like cancerous cells and it was like it didn't matter what the cell was it was where it was placed and after a lot more work it was discovered that the cells acted the way they do because of the messages they're getting from around them you put a cell that has no job in the middle of your muscles can be turned into muscle cell. Your bone marrow is not working. You don't have any. You've got leukemia. If you can put undifferentiated cells into your bone marrow, the chemical messages from around them can tell them to turn into bone marrow. Now, a stem cell is basically an undifferentiated cell, a cell that doesn't have a job yet, a cell that will simply divide and divide and divide and do nothing. But if you've got a person who's not making, for example, blood cells properly because their bone marrow parts of it are not working, you can take some stem cells and put that into their bone marrow. It's the idea, it's the science they're trying to develop now. And the stem cells don't have a job, so they will listen to whatever chemical message around them and they will turn into those cells. So stem cells are undifferentiated cells that have the ability to turn into any other type of cell. And they are highly experimental. There's a few times they're being used now, but there's a lot of work being done because they believe it's got huge medical benefits for the future. You get IB exam questions on this, you need to know specific example, how they get the stem cell, where they put it, what it does. But almost always the mark scheme is going to give you marks for saying that it's experimental, saying there's side effects of cancer tumours at this point. There may not be in the future. It's still experimental, but really hopeful. And another question, what is the difference between adult and embryonic stem cells? Well, apart from the source, there are probably two main differences. The embryonic stem cells divide more. They've got a greater potential for division, which leads to a greater risk for cancer tumours. On the other hand, the adult stem cells can be taken from the person they're going to be put back into, just a different area of their body, meaning there's going to be no issues with rejection of those cells because they're introduced into somebody. So if I take embryonic stem cells and introduce them into an adult, because it's not the same person, there will be rejection issues. We then have to use medication to suppress the immune system of our patient. Now one of the new things that started is we, when you're born, your parents can bank some of your stem cells, pay for them to be maintained as embryonic stem cells for your life, meaning if you ever need them for types of medicine we don't even have invented yet, they're going to be waiting for you. And there's a couple of private companies who are doing that now.